Okay, so we left the last uh, class here at this point. Now I'm going to talk about uh, this thing which is called the ambiguity and the change of meaning. Now in English whenever we would like to convey anything we would like to be unambiguous so that our language actually means what w what we want to express. We don't want to have a confusion in our writing and we don't want to write something which is different from what we would like to convey. And let's look at an example and to understand uh, how GMAT uh, uh, board expects you to remove ambiguity for your lang from your language and how uh, to check ambiguity and remove them. So let's read this example. Registered brokerage firms have been required to record the details of all computerized program trade made in the past year so that the government agencies will be able to decide whether they should be banned. Uh, now, the government's agencies will be able to decide the will and should have small difference should uh, should actually is used in other context but let's not look at that part as I told you you will have many reasons to eliminate one or the other on s options so the problem here is with they now is they referring to the registered brokerage firms or is they referring to the computerized program and we don't know and uh, this sentence is uh, using this unambiguous part where he says that uh, whether the government agencies will be able to decide whether they should be banned. Okay, Some people might guess by common sense that they is the computerized program and they is not the registered firms. So, okay, so we, we have to be uh, very careful uh, in, in removing uh, these kind of errors which creates ambiguity in the sentence. So we, we are down with two when we talk about the program trades and uh, when we look at option D which is in the blue uh, we'll be able to decide whether program trades should be able to be banned. Now this able to be able to be is kind of unidio uh, unidiomatic uh, changing the meaning or making it strange so we'll be able to decide whether the program should be banned is good enough why, why to use will be able to. It means that uh, they have another constraint there which uh, uh, which makes uh, the sentence awkward. So D goes out and the best option here is uh, E which is the last one. So as you can see from this example it's about removal of unambiguous parts of the sentence and uh, making it clear enough so that everybody can read and understand it faster. And if the GMAT board expects you to learn to remove these kind of errors to make language more clear it's, it's fair enough they are not asking you any uh, tough grammatical rules and we are going to see and understand what kind of errors we generally do and we are going to make a list of them and understand them uh, very clearly. So these are some of the tough terms which are used uh, sometimes uh, in the explanation of questions of sentence correction like subord subordinate clause, dependent clause, preposition, modifying phrase, independent clause, uh, simple past tense, possessive, antecedent, infinitive and all these uh, these kind of words. We are going to look at them a little bit later. Okay, And we are going to look at them very scientifically, very systematically, very logically and very intuitively to understand how they are important in the language which we are using day to day life and what GMAT board expects from us. To start with this uh, series and to be able to do the questions of level 1, we just need to uh, learn a little bit of uh, grammar. So the, these are the things which uh, you should know and it's expected from you. So a noun is a word that's uh, used to name a person, place of a thing, fair enough. A uh, verb is uh, a word that expresses action. Su open the box. So su is the noun, open is the verb and box is again a noun. Now an adjective is a word that modifies a noun or talks about the properties of the noun. An adverb is a word that modifies a verb, adverb or, an, uh, or another adverb. A preposition is a word that notes the relation of a noun to an action. And a phrase is a group of words acting as a single part of speech. So a phrase uh, is missing either by a subject or a verb, but it, uh, it can act as a single part of speech. So Sue opened the big box of chocolates here, big is the adjective. Okay, so you need to be clear with a little bit about these things because 
uh, let me talk about why this is important uh, to the grammar because when we are going to talk about like sue open the big box of chocolate and suppose i i rem i move this big and i make it that uh, big sue open the box of chocolate it would mean that sue is big and if i made it like sue open the box of big chocolate so it would mean that the chocolates are big so big is a kind of adjective that modifies a noun it talks about the box so it should it should be close to the box it's placed just before the box and that's the reason and when we are going to look at tougher sentences and uh, cases of uh, modification of a whole sentence we are going to look uh, uh, we uh, at them at a later stage but then we are going to look at things in in a little bit different way so you need to know adjective is something that modifies a noun adverb is something which modifies a verb a preposition uh, is kind is uh, something which uh, talks about the relation of noun to an action and a phrase is a group of words acting as a single part of uh, speech so phrase could be a group of words which which can act as a single part of speech but they are missing a subject or a verb <coughs> okay we are going to look at this a little bit late the preposition and modifiers but uh, uh, let me give you uh, a little bit intro about this thing now a preposition a phrase is a group of uh, words beginning with a preposition and like any phrase a preposition phrase does not contain a subject or a verb now let's look at this example even if you did not got it from here sue open the big box of chocolates so if if i add sue quickly open the big box of chocolates then quickly would be modifying opened and big is an adjective for the noun box okay so uh we'll have different uh, adjectives and adverbs modifying different uh, verbs and nouns respectively and it it would mean something which uh, we could perceive okay here of is a preposition because it shows relation between box and the chocolates like of chocolates is a preposition phrase okay so of chocolates is acts like uh, uh, an adjective by a modifying box so we are going to look at all these things a little bit later okay let's look at clause uh, which uh, if you want to understand clause for now you can just see uh, this green and uh, violet lines and these are like two clause so clause are a group of words that contains a subject and a verb so she was famished is like a, 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 a an independent sentence and she quickly opened the box of chocolates is an independent sentence and because is used to join these two clause so clause is a group of sentence which is joined uh, just uh, understand this part here and we are going to look at these specifics and we are going to look at the list of pronouns so uh, the pronouns uh, list uh, uh, the list of things which we should consider singular and the list of things which we should consider plural that's again uh, an appendix so we are going to look on that as well so these are the things which uh, we are going to look at uh, as far as the grammar goes but uh, in spite of all these uh, things we can use common sense to actually uh, do the questions uh, and understand the things well so let's look at this example and this is a case of pronoun error now uh, the pronoun error uh, is an error where uh, we use a pronoun but the pronoun should be pointing to something which should be very clear and it should agree with the kind of pronoun uh, it is pointing so if if it's a singular case then the pronoun should be singular and uh, if it's a plural then a pronoun should be plural and it's fair enough and and if some if somebody reads uh, uh, this sentence and he wants to know whether the uh, brussels uh, is a single thing or a multiple thing and when he goes to they he think that this might be a multiple thing and this might be uh, Uh, something uh, you know of the plural kind so we, which which makes uh, things uh, quite different from what we actually want to convey so let's uh, read this read this sentence and understand what is pronoun error so while brussels had smashed uh, has smashed uh, all western european tourism revenue reports this year they still uh, lag well behind in the exports so they is is making uh, brussels plural but we know that it is not it's it's a uh, uh, it's uh, it's a nation or a city or a place so it's it's a singular thing so it would be the thing which we are looking at and uh, 
we we are not allowed to change the meaning so we cannot change this year to in the last year okay and it lags still well behind is not the way to put things so it still lags uh, well behind the export so e is the best option here so we we saw that how uh, using pronouns in the wrong way can create a confusion whether some person would think that uh, the case is singular or plural if you don't know the meaning of the word of course then uh, that would be more messy so gmat requires you to understand the pronouns and we are going to uh, look at the list of singular and pl plural pronouns uh, in the upcoming uh, uh, videos so this is about pronoun error and uh, the grammar that we are going to use in the next session we are going to start with the uh, modifiers okay thank you for watching this very small video we are going to again continue in the next video